And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us straight from the wonderful world of Elder Brain, previously known for... Crown of the Oathbreaker, and now the upcoming module, Torrents of the Spell Hoarder. The one and only ground control to Major Tom himself. <laughs> there, there's my one. There's my one. Better known as Tom. How are you doing today, man? Hi, Mojo. Great to be here. Mm -hmm. Glad to be back. Thank you for thank you for coming all the way back. Uh, I I know that we had planned on this earlier in the month, but um, it but. I think you. I think you were down with the flu at the time. I hope. I'm hoping you're doing better. Yeah, m much better now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh it, it is that time. It is that time of the season. I've. I remember my old man remarking that you can take all the medicine in the world and get over a cold or flu in in a week, or take none of it and get over it in seven days. Well, it was exactly a week, so and I didn't take anything. <laughs> so, so, so your old man's right. Yep. So I remember. I remember when I asked you get when I asked you about the origin story of Crown of the Oathbreaker. A lot of it came from surveys with your user base about what sort of what sort of what sort of races, what sort of classes, what sort of um, adversaries and the like that you'd want that they'd want to see, and the results of those surveys formed the foundation for the highlights of Crown of the Oathbreaker. With Torrents of the Spell Hoarder, was it a similar origin story? Uh, yep, exactly. So this is our company's approach is, uh, you know, we we do elaborate surveys. So these are, you know, 100 plus question surveys going into all kinds of topics, you know, setting the... BBG, NPCs, you know, how magic should work, dungeons, uh, all kinds of stuff. And the plot, of course, is, is probably the most important one. And uh, so, f first of all, we, we wanted to continue Crown of the Oathbreaker. So, uh, Torrance is a, is a high-level adventure. Crown uh, finishes at level 15. Um, you know, so Torrance starts off at level 15. It... it can be a continue a direct continuation of, of Crown of the Oathbreaker, but at, it works as a, a standalone adventure as well. And we already mentioned um, all the neighboring kind of regions or kingdoms for Aglarian, um, where Crown of the Oathbreaker took place. Mm -hmm. And so the the first vote was where which region should the the the, the next uh, book be, and um, the community voted on the Kalhe Sea, which is the, you know, the Isles of Dr Draconic Isles of Santoros, and uh, the underwater uh, sea elf kingdom of of Arvanshi. Um, and uh, this this was the most popular one. So um, it it's obviously a, a seafaring adventure, um, Torrens. And then we created another survey once we knew the setting, so it was a more, I would say, setting-specific kind of questions. Um, but same exact approach, you know, we, we took it up, put it up for a vote, and, uh, and the backbone and, you know, the, the, the entire structure of Torrents of the Spell Order is a community-driven, you know, voting-based adventure. So, and if if uh, I invite everyone to to check out our Kickstarter page, which actually has the under the community section on the bottom there, um, you 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 can access the survey itself and see you know exactly what kind of questions we asked and and how the voting turned out. Mm -hmm. Now, with with that in mind, when it Doing a doing a sea based campaign it is, and is certainly an interesting s setup, especially when it comes to how people um, view fantasy. Like a lot, a lot of people view fantasy as 
for, as forest dungeons or the like. And with this one, you have more of a archipelago like approach. Um, was, yep. was that in part of, how much of that was, was born from the surveys and how much of that was born from the setting that you guys kind of hinted at with Crown of the Oathbreaker? Well, I would say that, uh, you know, since we love making sandbox style adventures and, and since the community, you know, seems to, to enjoy it a little bit more than the linear approach, I would say uh, an archipelago kind of setting works really well with a, a sandbox, you know, have lots of different islands and locations on a, on a map, on a, on a sea. You know, um, in this case, mm -hmm. we knew that you know the Isles of Santoros would be a, a an already kind of set uh, location, but of course it's a it's an it's a chain of islands, so we can we, we have a lot of uh, you know flexibility and freedom to to add a lot of locations on the isles themselves, and then you know since the underwater part uh, wasn't set at all. Um, other than the fact that there's a, a lost underwater elf, you know, city somewhere, um, we can put those locations anywhere on the map. So um, I would say it's even easier to 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 structure a, a sandbox adventure on uh, on an ocean or a, or on a sea setting. Um, so I, I would say it worked out much better. Um, and and uh, and and we have a lot of leeway in, in in terms of what kind of locations and and where the locations are exactly, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, if now um given given that and given the given the sandbox nature of things, um, if you were to give the elevator pitch for for the for the kind of adventure that Torrents of the Spell Hoarder is meant to be. What would that pitch be? What would that pitch be? Because obviously, there, obviously, there's the doing this at conventions kind kind of approach. So having a pitch is sure. important. Well, um, it's uh, I would say the the most unique aspect of Torrents of the Spell Hoarder is that it is a, a high level adventure. So you know, it's pretty pretty rare to have a, a an adventure start at fifteenth level, um, and uh, and. It's certainly a, an approach that uh, that uh, you know our competitors or even you know big companies like Wizards uh, stays clear of. Um, so I would say that's that's the the most unique aspect of it, and uh, it's a it's a seafaring exploration and investigation adventure, which uh, which was voted again by the community. So th those were the kind of style. Uh, wise th those were the most popular ones it's uh it's an epic adventure where you know the players are on a on a mission of exploration to these legendary uh chain of islands and and a lost underwater sea elf city uh which is actually ruled by a, a, a kraken uh, and a kraken arch necromancer kraken so it's it's a you know super high level uh, enemy there, who terrorizes the sea and and uh, views it as as its domain, and uh, the players will have to uncover, you know, a, a series of of uh, of uh, magical, you know, uh, orbs of of raw magic. These are the orbs of magic, um, and ultimately face the spell hoarder, who who tries to take control of over, over all of these orbs of magic and use their power for itself. And of course the players will have to stop that. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Now, given that, given that, would you say, would you say that this is a, since you mentioned sandbox, would this be a campaign that would lend itself well to hex crawls? I did see that there's a hex map on the Kickstarter page. Uh, yeah, of course. So the that's the point is is uh, and and sandbox. In my opinion, you know the 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 main nature of a sandbox adventure is that really players have the freedom to go anywhere. So they're 
they can crawl through the hexes in whatever order they want. So it, it really doesn't matter what what order they they complete the adventure. And uh, and and yeah, so we have a, a huge map uh, of the sea itself, uh, which is a hexed map, and we plan about a hundred locations on this map. So really, there's there's a rich environment to to explore and and uh, and uh, discover. And we also plan actually another uh, map, which uh, actually the the decision was made to to also develop this is the Isles of Centros themselves. So we'll probably have a, a separate you know poster map uh, with a hex for the Isles. Um, where a lot of the adventure will take place, which is a kind of mainland, uh, you know, land-based uh, terrestrial uh, type of setting. Mm -hmm. So, taking taking that into taking that into account, um, obvious obviously, if we're go if you're going along the Calhe Sea and the Zan and the Xanthros Islands, um, that that's going to involve a whole lot of time being on ship. Um, yes. Have you have you guys given some given some thought into accommodating um, ship combat? Yeah, and actually, one of the uh, we we plan to to have a, a section on naval combat. So really, you know, put put a heavy emphasis on that. Um, we already have three. Uh, ship maps designed. So the you know first thing we did was. Okay, it's it's obviously going to be a sailing adventure, so the the party needs a, an epic ship to to uh, <laughs> to uh, you know do this. Um, again, this is it, the the map is on the the Kickstarter page itself. Uh, we're calling the F the Flame Drake, so it's a draconic ship that can actually sail itself. You know, we always ask the question: What if the party consists of you know four dwarf barbarians? You know how 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 do we do go about developing an adventure for you know four barbarians that have zero magic use and and uh, so it's it's also and of course they're not sailors let's say have you know no inclination towards sailing so it's a it's it's a partly automated sailing ship that can breathe fire and and uh, even you know fly for for a short period. Um, Please check out the map. It, it turned out really great. And then, of course, we have pirates and with their own, you know, flagship. And and uh, actually, then the adventure starts on a ship. You know, the the players are invited uh, as heroes. You know, that save the the realm uh, to Santros um, as a as a diplomatic mission. So the adventure itself starts on a on a separate ship, on a third ship. So very heavy emphasis on on ships and naval combat, there have been, you know, kind of official, I would say, in quotation marks, uh, rules for for naval combat. They tend to be kind of complex and convoluted. So we want to have a, as we did for Crown of the Oathbreaker, where we focused on on mass combat and army combat using units. So we we came up with a our own. Um, Kind of unit stat blocks, you know how to how to uh, to handle army units on a on a on a stat basis. We plan to do the same for for naval combat and and really kind of streamline and I would say uh, simplify you know naval combat so so it works mm -hmm. a little bit better than than in our opinion the the more complex rule formats that are out there. Yeah. Actually, sorry. Pathfinder had a, a pretty good one. Um, it was for the Shackles Adventure Path, mm -hmm. which I really liked. Um, maybe in that vein, but again, much more simplified. Yeah, and when and personally, when it comes to ha when it comes to handling ship combat, there's always the diff There's always the question of are you ha are you having the whole party running one ship, or are you having them? Act as act as a small fleet, um, but from what from the way you're describing, it sounds like it's going to be in the former category. It, it would be, yeah. Um, 
at the end of the adventure there, we're planning a kind of Armada-style um, encounter, so it should work with multiple ships, of course. Um, just in terms of, you know, the, the main questions are how do we handle ship uh, hit points, you know, uh, which is a, a big question for me, for example, you know, if how, how to sink a ship. So is it is the, the whole ship, you know, has a, a single hit point or hull sections have different hit point thresholds or, you know, so th this kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, ballistas and catapults, how do they work on ships and, and how to, you know, light a ship on fire, for example. How long does it take for a ship to burn? And then there's different ship categories, of course, you know, from really small Corsairs to, you know, major ship of the line type of, uh, you know, 18th century sailing ships, um, mm -hmm. which are, you know, totally different throughout history. I'm actually a... a historian by, by trade so so that that's my background um and um, i focused heavily on on medieval history through my studies you know vikings and, and um and med medieval period where of course it was much different than than uh your you know age of exploration and and uh you know those kind of sailing ships so 18th 19th century um and fantasy tends to, I, I would say, focus on the latter rather than the, you know, long ships of the Vikings, which which were incredible sailing vessels. You know, first kind of ocean-going uh, ships, but uh, but uh, way more not primitive, but but more you know less developed, I would say, than of course the the sh sh sailing ships that we know of. Mm -hmm. that are associated with uh with sailing ships in fantasy settings yeah and i can, i can certainly get i can certainly um get behind that the so uh, uh, to have a mix i i would say sorry to to we want to have a good mix is mm -hmm. is is uh is the bottom line i think yeah now with that, with that in with that in mind, uh, just because just because of the because of the approach that you that you guys are doing with with an emphasis on underwater, obviously, a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the typical races and races and class combinations could cer could certainly fit, but some but some might fit, some might have more difficulty than others. If I if I recall, if I recall, you guys do you guys do have a few a few entries when it comes to race when it comes to races and um, subclasses. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. What, what do you mean entries? Um, I'd for the time being, I'd like I'd like to focus on the um, subclass aspect. Now, obviously, go obviously going through all. All of the subclasses individually would be would um, be a lengthy affair. So, yep. in, instead, I'd like to ask the first question: is mm -hmm. um, is e is each of the core classes represented with a new subclass? Uh, yes, actually, two of them. Um, we had a stretch goal that's been unlocked already, so we planned twelve new subclasses for each base class in the adventure itself and since the stretch goal has been unlocked that has been upgraded to 24 so uh we'll we'll present two new subclasses for each base class uh we actually just posted about an update about this so if uh if you go on the kickstarter page on updates you can see um the last two updates actually uh, one of them is is the the subclasses, all, all of the I mean the stretch goals. So all the stretch goal subclasses are listed there with a brief description, and all the you know twelve base ones as well. So all twenty four subclasses, if you if you want to get an idea of of exactly what they will be, um, I would suggest to to you know briefly just to peruse the 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 updates themselves because mm -hmm. we have them listed. And, uh, um, of course, 
many of them focus on on C settings, um, but and and but we had some good ones from the community itself. So some ideas on uh, we have a very active you know Discord community, and uh, we have a sub subclass uh, dedicated channel. So we invite everyone to to you know lend their ideas and and uh, we had some some really cool ones. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, let me just mention one specifically: the Oath of Grandeur, um, which is a paladin um, that is based on you know their idea of of they believe in they're they're driven by their self you know worth so uh, uh, like a bodybuilder <laughs> type of paladin you know um which i thought was a really cool idea and, and wait we... so we actually have muscle wizards <laughs> yeah but like a muscle <laughs> mu- a faith, faith of of self you know <laughs> oh yeah. you, re- you and, realize and that in doing this some somebody is going that you're going to have somebody making a couple um, NPC NPC paladins named Hans and Franz, right? Sure, sure, <laughs> but sure, go go for it. <laughs> but now, given 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 who I am, I feel I feel I have to ask this: Do you have a do you have a subclass in mind for monks? Uh, yeah. Um, the two monk classes are just let me actually I'm, I'm, I have it open so um. I can give you the the exact one. So one is the way of the wave. Um, you know, a monk uh, focused on on movements and and you know thinking like the ocean itself. So so like a a a, a fighting style based on water and how it flows and and can be you know hard and 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 this this was I think in a lot of uh, Kung Fu movies, and the other one is one sec. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Sorry, I have to look them up because it's hard to keep twenty-four subclasses in your head. Of course, <laughs> not everybody can have can have the giant <laughs> amount of space that I do. <laughs> yeah. So Way of the Wave was the first one, and the second one is Way of the Sea Serpent. So um, Sea Serpent, of course, like again from, you know, even Viking mythology or or many, uh, you know, mythos or mythi, um, uh, driven by, you know, meditations and esoteric revelations about the fighting techniques of the sea serpent mm. itself. And, and of course, we want to have a sea serpent, you know, which is classic monster, so we'll have a, a sea serpent in the adventure itself, which should be cool if, if someone plays a, you know, sea serpent monk. Mm-hmm. Now... You, asked also, you also asked about race. Um... Of course, the the Isles of Santaros. So let me explain a little bit about the background there. So um, the Isles of Santaros were formed many millennia ago when Santaros, who was a a primeval or primordial fey dragon of colossal proportions, so the size of a kingdom, um, was banished from the fey realm to the prime, and uh, this was during the and in our kind of mythology, the the age of the dark angels, where the, when the the dark star, who was a a, a solar, so an, an a dark angel um, of the darkness of you know the 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 darkness god or deity, mm-hmm. um, was was ruling on the prime. And uh, the Dark Star and Santaros clashed over the seas. Uh, the dragon was slain and fell into the ocean. And thus the the islands formed. So the, the islands formed over its body, you know, volcanic eruptions over centuries and, and uh, formed 
the islands. So the the isles themselves resemble the shape of a of a fallen dragon, and uh, the magical energies you know from this fey dragon manifested in a way that uh, there's a chance for whoever is born on the islands to be born as a half dragon, mm-hmm. and uh, th- we'll have a special actually race called the a Santa Rosian half dragon. Um, we're going back to the, uh, you know, classical second edition, third edition days. So these half dragons actually have wings, mm-hmm. which I know the current ones don't, but I think that's, a, <laughs> that's the kind of silly thing. So, um, these are winged half dragons and, uh, and actually whoever's born on the isles can have, uh, you know, a, a chance that the, that the draconic bloodline manifest in their blood and they're born as a half dragon mm-hmm. uh the islands themselves are led by by half dragons so whoever's born a half dragon is is considered as a noble so the 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 ruling class or the elite um you know caste i would say it's a caste system mm-hmm. or have dragons and they're slave owners so um but uh but it's a voluntary type of slavery. So, of course, they give the chance to to stay on the islands, um, to whoever wants to serve one of the noble houses, which are, of course, segmented according to, to dragon hues. Um, and, uh, and so this, of course, there's going to be a lot of half-dragon uh, templated... Um, Humanoids and of course beasts as well. So of course these are not restricted. You know this blessing of Santoros is not restricted to to civilized or intelligent species, but any you know beast or monstrosity uh, can have offspring that are Santorosian half dragons. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm guessing that and that um just that just being born on the island is a is a chance to become a half dragon. It, the par- the parentage can or ca- or cannot um, play a factor in that. Yeah, exactly. So it's it, there's a, there's a chance, and and it's it's a super rare occurrence. So I would say you know one every decade or so. So it's it's a it's a very unique and uh, considered as a gift or as a blessing, and uh, and in terms of social ascendance or you know becoming a noble through birth. Um, it's it's a it's a very uh, you know sought after thing. Mm-hmm. So many people make the pilgrimage for this exact reason to to have their children born as a as a half dragon mm-hmm. on the islands. Yeah. Now, with with that in with that in mind, given the given the nobility, um. I know that you plan. I know that you plan on put on putting some set, some setting appropriate things for subclasses, magic items, feats, and the like. Um, are you planning on doing something similar when it comes to backgrounds? Uh, not really. I, I would say no. So uh, we skipped this for Crown of the Oathbreaker. Probably we we didn't consider including these in uh, in Torrens either. Um. This might change, of course. So we'll 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 look into it. We'll put it up, you know, uh, to to see if there what the community reaction to this is. But I think the the reason why we skipped it for Crown is that there's so many great backgrounds already in existence, and most of them, you know, give great flair to to a character, but but uh, but statistically don't really. You know, they're minor things. So you get a plus one on something, you know, and a skill or, you know, an extra language or, you know, they're they're pretty minor in, in terms of, of statistical relevance. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, that's why, and, and in Crown of the Old Raker, we have 36 subclasses. So there's three for each base class, plus these two, you know, so we'll have already in our canon five subclasses for each class. Um so we want to put a heavier emphasis on on subclasses. 
which are of course way more complex and more statistically driven. Mm -hmm. now, but we we might. So I'm not ruling it out. Um, this is a discussion I would have to uh, have with Gabor and David, you know, and the other game developers here. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, see what what our our community thinks about it. But uh, but at this point, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. So now, one one thing, there's been a narrative for the lo for the longest time that what that once players get once players get into the teens, D and D becomes boring. And you've you guys have made the command decision to ha to have um, high level campaigns so I'm I'm curious what your thought is about that about that particular narrative because I'm, I'm sure you've heard it as much as I have yeah sure um, well I certainly enjoy playing high level characters I understand how creating a 15th level character can be can be problematic so of course people want to start at level one or the reason why crown actually starts at level five is is that's that's what the most popular you know tier uh level tier was so that's why we we did it from five to fifteen um we wanted of course to have a continuation to the setting and to the story so that's why we're we're going to be focusing and not just for torrents but for our future adventures you know, we want to bring it up into the epic levels, so above 20 um, down the line. Um, I always enjoy, of course, and, and sorry, keeping in mind that Torrents, if it's a continuation of, of Crown, then you would want to take your 15th level character from Crown of the Oathbreaker and just continue the adventure. So we wanted to serve our community in a sense to make that possible and, and not to start fresh or a new with with new characters um in terms of uh of com complexity and and gameplay um i certainly think that that fifth edition and probably with uh you know dnd one when it, it comes out um wizards is heavily focused on on simplifying things and despite the fact that we enjoyed playing third edition and 3.5 and pathfinder with their crazy complex rules and all kinds of you know tweaks and character customizations uh fifth edition is is for us a preferred um game system it's exact for the fact or especially f for the fact that it is a simple uh more simple rule set so, you know, you don't have, with concentration, I remember keeping track of Excel sheets and handling, you know, all the active spells that our characters had on on spreadsheets because it was just insane, you know? Like when you have 30 spells active at the same time and you don't even remember how many, you know, AC bonuses you got from 15 different sources. So... In that sense, I, I don't think that nowadays high-level characters are that complicated, you know, mm -hmm. um, as, as they were in the past. So, of course, it's a relative thing, and and to each his own, because some people enjoy, you know, the the complexity and having keeping track of thirty spells, and and I would say, of course, it's more heroic to play that way. But uh, but Five E did a, a really good job of of keeping things simple and streamlined and and uh, which lend lends itself to to even high level play. So it's not of not that much of a concern. I don't think that uh, how much it used to be. Yeah. And truth truth be told, when it comes to the, when it comes to the whole simplification battle cry I've, al I've always argued that that's a that that is not the that is not the quick fix that some people think it is in fact in fact it can be a double-edged sword um uh, how so or what do you mean I'm, I'm curious um i liken it 
I liken it to what happened with the with the Nintendo Wii in the short term versus the long term. In the short term, yeah, you had a bunch you had a bunch of people get getting in on the thing, uh, but because of, but be, but that sort but that sort of short term doesn't real isn't really going to stick around. So you had a bunch of people who would who would just get Wii Sports and nothing and nothing else, and I'm I'm always in, I'm in favor of not of not necessarily making making something e in. in I guess let me ref, let me rephrase it. Making something easy for newcomers is is nice and all, but I'd ra I'd rather I'd rather a system that t that brings in newcomers and makes them into more seasoned folk. I give gives them mm -hmm. incentive to stick around. Mm -hmm. And I did a vid I did a video a few months ago talking about the high level drop off th drop off thing and it is a it is a compli it is a complicated issue but one of one of the things is is not giving in my in my opinion not giving proper support for for players after they after they've hit that beginner spot mm -hmm. uh, which is which is why which is why I'm thankful for stuff like crown of the oathbreaker um torrents of the spell hoarder and a few other, and a few other modules that are doing just that yeah, it's it's not not many. I agree. Not not many people are doing this. So and and uh, and we feel that ourselves that that uh, you know of course many people are not just now getting into D and D and and uh, there's a lot lots and lots of you know teens and and uh, that are picking up the game, which is a wonderful thing. So where we couldn't be happier. Um, we are. Probably more, you know, since we've been playing for thirty plus years, um, I consider myself and my crew, you know, we're, we're veterans in in D and D. So we've, we've seen every iteration, and I have a first edition, you know, D and D books on my shelf. So mm -hmm. you know, we've been we've been playing since the beginning, um, but it's and it's a great time to to play in D and D right now, and we're super appreciative of, of uh, you know all the, the the newcomers and people who just pick up the game but and and there is a, a niche for for high level stuff which we plan to fill mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, but I think with with the right you know amount of of, of, of spells and and feeds that that you know work or can be scaled to high levels um, plus you know of course subclasses as well you know which would get their you know, last abilities around fifteen to eighteen or even twenty. So, you know, the it's it it can be enjoyable to play. Yeah. Um, and for Torrance, it's it's uh, from a game developer perspective. Of course, it's it's much harder to write. I I think a high level adventure than a low level one because we const constantly have to be thinking about spells. You know, like okay, fifteenth level people can cast. You know, in Torrance, six, seventh level spells, which can solve problems in a in an instant. You know, so how to to make an exciting adventure, which can be circumvented by a simple spell. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's that's a huge challenge. So every encounter, you have to think, okay, well, what if they teleport away? What if they, you know, of course, flying is a is is a given. You know, so it's it's a it's it's much harder to design dungeons and monsters and and uh, and plot lines, you know, keeping keeping high level spells in mind, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's that's a challenge that we're 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 up to it. The challenge, I would say, um, and uh, and as you said, we we were wholeheartedly dedicated to to providing the support for for high level stuff. And um, with that, with that in mind, I also saw that you you plan you plan on adding a few monstrous templates. Um, obviously, obviously, once again, going through all of them would be a bit redundant. So, what would be a few standout exa standout examples of the templates one can see? Well, the the one I already mentioned. So, this uh, our own 
uh, half dragon template, the Sanderosian half dragon would be the the primary example. Um, and then the other one, since the the adventure itself, the plotline centers heavily on on magic. So these orbs of magic will have all kinds of effects that they can you know they can be harvested for magical essences. And we're going into different, you know, meta magic effects, and you know what happened. And we're uh, the adventure focuses on becoming an avatar of magic. You know, all the different sub schools of magic. So we're 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 we've divided them into the eight schools of magic, and it's possible to become even for players to become an avatar of that specific portfolio of magic itself. Um, and uh, so we'll have a, a, a magic magical template as well. So kind of like a, a and we we haven't finalized the name for it yet. Mm -hmm. Or I well I I'd have to to look, but uh, and you know an eldritch manifestation. Let, let's call it that. I think that's the that's the working <laughs> working title. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, and and kind of an aberrant uh, template or an aberration that's uh, born of magic. So unnatural in the sense that it's it's magical. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we'll have eight different variations of this template based on the eight schools of magic. You know, necromancy, evocation, enchantment, conjuration, and so forth. Yeah, and speaking of that, I did see that one of the potential um, subclasses is the is a school of meta magic. Yes, and and yep, good good spot. It, it, that's exactly right. So that that's why that's included there. Um, the other the other thing I I found kind of amusing is the College of Sea sh Shanties, which I hope to God nobody playtesting actually tried to sing one. <laughs> Well, uh, actually, I think that's that's a, another community idea. Um, um, I'll have to check, but but I think uh, someone suggested that on Discord. I loved it, so that that's uh, that's a super enjoyable bard. I think that I, it would be great to one of my favorites. So I might actually, you know, when we play test ourselves, um, that's going to be my character for sure. Mm -hmm. So. With that, with that in mind, I, I, I know that the Crown of the Oathbreaker was an absolute monster of a of a book, going at about nine hundred pages. Um, yeah, nine nine hundred sixteen to be exact. Mm -hmm. It's it's the longest single publication because there's been series that are longer, um, slightly, not not by much, but uh, we're proud that it's it's a uh, it's it should be in the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, yeah, we went all out. So if uh, and and we're out of stock actually. So of course I mentioned that we're uh, waiting for the reprint. It's possible to pre-order it, and of course it's included in the Kickstarter, the the current Kickstarter, yep. with all kinds of accessories that we we've, we've developed for for Crown. So dice and DM screen and poster maps of all the sandboxes, um, which are available as an exclusive currently. Um, just for the for the next you know ten days or so, so it's it's a critical time to to get these. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an epic epic adventure or magnum opus, so to speak. But sorry, I what was your, what was your well, question? I, well, I was I was going to ask <laughs> if you were shoot, if you were shooting for a similar length with torrents, or do you think it's going to be um slight slightly smaller? No, it's much smaller. So uh, we're we're keeping it at the 300, 350 page uh, normal, um, you know, book book size. Um, it it was a, a you know a blood, sweat, and tears to 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 make crown um, in terms of time and editing and you know illustrations and everything. We're super happy that. Uh, you know, it became a, a, a beast of a tome um, because it is singular uh, in the sense and very unique. And you know, we we put all our hearts and energies into it. 
um, but but it's unmanageable. So it's it's uh, it it was great to to churn it out and and you know create a masterpiece, but uh, we want to you know all the the following adventures and like torrents and the next you know three after that are going to be in the normal 300 350 page length but combined so we're talking about thousands and thousands of pages of of material you know so once we get to the end of the the campaign arc it's going to be over 2000 pages so we we have four four other adventures planned you know that's that's about 2000 pages of of material yeah and i will certainly be looking forward to to um seeing how to seeing how it develops and just the insanity that that comes about with it although and although um anyone who anyone who tries singing a sh singing a shanty just because they're a bard um will have to go through the punishment game at my table <laughs> okay <laughs> the it's n it's nothing t it's nothing too t it's nothing too serious. They just have to drink a bottle of bacon soda. Bacon soda, <laughs> spiced with rum. It would be no, the no no the, no. <laughs> you, the, bacon soda, B A C O N soda. Imagine bacon grease and and mixed with club soda. All right. Well, bacon makes everything tastier. So, are you sure about like that? My... <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what that's what they say. Conventional, conventional wisdom will t will s will say many things, but oftentimes conventional wisdom is wrong. Hmm? I mean, con conventional wisdom will say will say, will tell will tell me that fighters aren't supposed to be powerful. Conventional wisdom again is wrong, but. <laughs> With all, with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness at play around here. My pleasure, Mildred. Always a pleasure. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to further discuss tor torrents or some of the other stuff you guys have cooking for, um, for Elderbrain, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. I I agree with that one. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present... My name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>